In today's session we are going to explore tone and we are going to create depth in our drawings using tone. We're going to create light, medium and dark tones with a pencil. We're going to experiment with different sketching techniques which are cross hatching, blending and stippling. And then we are going to apply these techniques to make objects appear 3D. And then we are going to create our own objects eventually. So let's start off. What is tone? So tone is used to create observational drawings. And an observational drawing is anything that we have in front of us and we study it, we explore it and we draw it. So an example is you've got a fruit bowl, that's an example of still life. If you've got some bottles or some jars and you're drawing different everyday objects. Um, you can also draw buildings outside, a city scene and you use tone when you're creating these drawings. So why? Why do we use tone when we are creating observational drawings? Because our paper is flat. Our paper is 2D and the objects that we see in real life are 3D. So tone helps in our drawings to convert them from 2D into 3D. And we do this by adding different shading there. use different shading and we use light, medium and dark shading to create different tones so we've got our light medium and dark and essentially that is what tone is made up from. So we can use different sketching techniques, which we are going to explore, to create texture within our objects. And artists also use layers of different lines to create highlights and shadows. So in this activity, we are going to use different pencils to create light, medium and dark tones. And you should have a B pencil. Mine is a 2B. Remember the B is a soft pencil and it's used to create dark tones. I've also got my H pencil and it tells you just on the side of the pencil. And the H pencil is hard and it is used to create lighter tones. So if you stick in your learning intention and your grid and you should have your two pencils ready. So to achieve a light tone you use a lighter pressure with the pencil and to achieve a darker tone you use a heavier pressure. So I'm going to use my B pencil and you should pick up your B pencil and we are just going to label dark to light. So this is our, going to be our gradient scale and we're going to put the heaviest pressure using our pencil here and then the lightest is going to be the lightest pressure. So this is just a bit of a recap, a bit of a practice to get us used to using the pencils again. So in the, your first box, we are going to use a heavy pressure. We're pushing quite hard with our pencil to fill that box. 
And at the moment, we're not doing a particular sketching style. We are just exploring how hard, how dark we can make our first box. So that is my darkest section. And so in my next box, I'm not going to apply as much pressure, but it still has to be quite dark. So I'm just taking a bit of pressure off my pencil just to fill my box. And by doing this exercise, it helps us to control our pencil and get used to how much pressure we need to create when we are doing our own observational studies. So when we get to our next box, we are halfway through, so we need to put even less pressure. By box number three, you should really start to see the gradient appear. And you can see a difference between box number one and box number three already. We're now moving on to our lighter scale. And I've just got to put even less pressure on. And when we move to box number five, even less pressure with our pencil to the page. And finally, number six, we are barely touching the page. So this should be our lightest box. And there we have it, our gradient scale. And we've created light, medium and dark tones with our 2B pencil. So we're now going to experiment with the following three different sketching techniques to create tone. And I've just drawn three different circles, so you can stick your circles in or draw around an object. And in our first box, in our first circle, we are going to be experimenting with cross hatching. In our middle circle, we are going to look at blending. And in our third circle, we are going to explore stippling. So I've just labelled them up now. Cross hatching. Cross hatching involves layers of lines that are drawn in different directions and the more layers that you apply the darker the area becomes so if I am choosing to do diagonal lines one way that is called just regular hatching if I then cross over my lines in a separate direction we are producing cross hatching so in our first circle, I've got my 2B pencil. The light source is coming from this direction. So the lightest area is going to be where it hits this surface here. And that's when it's going to create different highlights. And our shadows appear on the other side. So let's explore cross hatching. I am going to use my HB, my 2B pencil. I'm going to leave this area the lightest. Okay, so I'm going to put more pressure down here. And we're just going to build up with a series of lines. And remember, the closer our lines are, the darker the area appears. So remember this part here 
it's going to be our darkest so it doesn't matter if the lines touch because you can still see the technique that you've used and just going to become slightly further apart and less pressure is then used so that is our cross hatching let's move on to our blending and again the light source is coming from this direction so it's going to be lighter at the top and dark at the bottom so in blending different pressures are used when shading to achieve the light medium and dark tones and you can use your fingertip to help blend together the graphite in the pencil and it achieves a smooth effect and again you can use your rubber so in the areas that you might have blended too dark you can use your rubber to create the highlights so let's start our blending so I'll just start off dark down here and this one is all to do with pressure So for that first part, we're pushing really hard on our pencil and then we are easing off as we curve round. So the light source, the lightest area and the shadows are going to be the darkest. It's probably going to be dark to all around this area here. And then I'm just easing that pressure with my pencil. And then let's use our finger. So as we smudge the graphite in our pencil, start off with the dark and push it into the light. So I'm just using circular motions. It just smooths. So you should have graphite on your finger and that's fine, it will wash off. And then we can go back to help blend different areas. Okay. So as I've gone over this part here, I'm going to use my rubber to rub out in the same direction of the circle. You can see it creates really nice highlights. And then finally, we are going to move on to stippling. And the light source is exactly the same to make it easier. So this should be our lighter area. This should be our darker area. And stippling involves using layers of dots that are built up to give the appearance of light, medium and dark tones. So in this one we've used lines and we've crossed over our lines in different direction. So we've used different pressure on our pencil and our finger and then we're going to move on to docks, dots. So our darkest area is down here and we need to start adding in our dots quite close together and start to think about where you can use 
all of these different sketching techniques. How can you use these sketching techniques to create depth in your drawings and also to add different texture? I quite like the stippling example to use and apply it if you are drawing an orange. Just think about the surface of the orange and that texture is quite similar. So I'm following the same pattern, my dots, and you'll notice this one is definitely more time consuming, but it does produce really nice effects. Okay, so we're putting less pressure in our next in the layer and our dots should just be slightly further apart. And you can start to see the difference in the different layer already. And then we're going to add another inner layer. Our dots are even further apart and lighter. We're just repeating that. Then we can look back and then fill in this middle area a little bit more. 